I am Rebecca from Cheminets, and today I want Brown to finally be the star. And no, I'm not talking about myself. I mean, I guess I'm the star of Dipo Weekly and my last name happens to be Brown, but I want the color Brown to be the star. All right, that was a little bit hokey, but I'm gonna roll with it. We're gonna roll with it and try to create a colorway where the main color is a brown and then we have some hints of some other colors. Let's go look at the colors. Today, our main color is going to be Teddy Bear Brown but I want to have some hints of antique mauve and peach blush in there to bring some more orangish pink and then sort of like dirty pink notes into our colorway. But my hope and my plan is for the main color to be our teddy bear brown and so everything else should just be an accent versus sometimes in the past where I was hoping to get a mostly brown color white, but then I added too many pinks and so it ended up feeling very, very pink. We're hoping that we can do brown the star and then have our accents. But before I take you to the dye pot, please go ahead and subscribe to the Cabinet Tutorials YouTube channel and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. I'm pre-soaking a lot of yarn here right now, but our yarn base today is Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn, 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon. And I'm pre-soaking it in just some plain tap water for about 20 minutes. This is a yarn base that absorbs water really easily and fairly quickly. And since the colorway we're adding on is gonna be fairly random, it's okay if it doesn't have a super long pre-soak. I've brought 300 grams of our stroll over here. And to that, I'm gonna add eight cups of water and three tablespoons of white vinegar, which I've just plopped on, but we will stir it up as we sort of arrange the yarn here in the pan. And I have it with sort of like one side laid down and I'm just spreading it out a little bit. We're not necessarily going for speckles today. I don't think, I'm planning on playing around with the yarn and seeing what it does. We may, end up going for some speckles. I think my plan will be to add the brown all over, sort of m press it in a little bit, and then maybe come in the more pastel areas and add some of the other colors. At least that's what I'm feeling at the moment, but we'll see what happens once I start adding the colors on. But first, let me go ahead and heat this up, and I'm gonna go put on my deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves. Let's start off with our teddy bear brown. And I'm coming in with this. Uh, I wasn't sure if I'd be a little more like clumpy or doing sections. The goal is it for there to be a randomness to it. I don't want it to feel too resisty. But who knows, actually, I'm kind of liking this. Uh, and then we'll add little bits of the other colors in. But I am gonna go get my spoon and work this color through a bit. But I'm also gonna go wipe my fingers onto a yarn mop that I have just off camera. Okay, and the mop is just another skein of stroll. Uh, but now I'm coming in and moving this color through a bit. And I wanna see what it is that it's gonna do because it's definitely started to strike in the time that I walked away. But the nice thing about this color is that you could see that it is not um, on its own looking very pink or purple here. And we're gonna have the colors spread more as we add more and more color. And okay, I think I think we're gonna go with this, and now I'm gonna add in some of our other colors. Antique Mauve is not a color I use very much. And hopefully it's not gonna spread too much or then, then make things too pink, because that would be unfortunate. And I'm sort of on these white areas, bringing in a little bit. It doesn't need to be everywhere. But just bringing in some speckles. And I think that that might be the way that I do things here. 
So that's definitely rosier. The peach blush is going to pop a lot more. And not every round is going to have some of each of these colors. I'm sort of trying to intersperse them a little bit. But the peach blush is going to stand out more for sure. I am trying to be softer and less clumsy with the way I add these. Now as time goes on and as we add more and more color, there will be certainly more brown spread and things may not feel so like even, but we'll see what happens and where we gel and how we modify this as we move forward. But for now, I'm enjoying this. And as for our yarn mop, it got a little bit of some blue on it somewhere that may have come from my gloves that I used on another video. I'm going to add a tablespoon of white vinegar and a little bit of some water to this and squish it around because I'm noticing that the brown was spreading a fair amount and this should help make it a slightly better yarn mop uh, moving forward. I may also use this yarn mop for some other colors that I have uh, for another video. Zooming in, you can see our more purple that's super subtle, and then the orange that pops more. I think I'm going to wait five minutes before flipping, but we'll check and see if these colors move around at all after the five minutes are up. Okay, let's check and see how we're doing. Maybe a hint of some spread, but overall the colors have spread well. Therefore, it's time to flip. Now, the, when I say the colors have struck well, we're definitely going to see some brown spread and some hints of those other colors as well, but we're getting really good color coverage right now. And so that feels good. That feels good. And we're going to carry on and do a similar thing on this side. I'm expecting that our speckles are going to get more and more subtle as time goes on as we end up getting more of the brown spread overall. But once I added our teddy bear brown dye, I spread it out a little bit. And then in the lighter, more pastel areas, I speckled on the antique mauve and the peach blush. I then waited at least five minutes before moving the yarn and flipping it again. And really evaluating after that first flip, where the color was more pigmented, where I thought that some more brown should go. So that way we could try to let our secondary color still show through, but let everything feel very brown overall. I think I'm pretty satisfied with this color. I'm now gonna add eight cups of water to it, which should help any unbound browns spread out all over the yarn. And I know I just stuck my hands in, uh, but I knew the heat was low and then I added the eight cups of water and so I don't recommend doing that. Uh, my hands are totally fine, but still, uh, don't do that. <laughs> I'm just gonna flip the yarn over one more time to see, and I think we're good. So I'm gonna turn the heat up and we're gonna heat this for 30 minutes well, really 25 more minutes, uh, and then we can remove it from the dye bath and heat set our yarn mop. Here is our yarn mop. I have used it in more than just this one video, but I'm now gonna add it to this dye bath, which is not the dye bath from our speckled yarn, but another dye bath, uh, and we're gonna heat this for 30 minutes. But you can see that like these colors that we have in here, even with a couple other orange colors that I used in another project go really really well with our more brown speckled colorway we have back there. All right it has been 30 minutes and now I am going to remove the yarn. The speckles are very subtle but I will say we're all okay we're getting stuck on that skein but the yarn feels brown. It feels brown to me with like pink and orange speckles and that's what I wanted. I wanted something that felt brown. 
Um, it does have like a resist dyed feel to it almost because we've got the deeper patches and lighter patches, but I don't mind it. I think it's really pretty. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and let our yarn cool off and then we can wash it. And once the 30 minutes are up on our yarn mop back there, I will also remove it from the heat and let it cool completely. And I'll either wash it off camera or with the rest of our yarn. Let's wash our mostly brown yarn and hopefully the little bit of pink and orange that I added to it won't make it feel pink or purple overall. As we know, that can happen. But I'm overall very, very happy with how this came out. Like in this lighting right here, I can't tell if it's gonna feel a little pinkish to me. No, I think I'm feeling more brown and then the hint of warmth from the pink and from the peach. Um, I think we're pretty good. So let's go ahead and add a little bit of dish soap and we'll fill this back up. All right, and here we go. Of course, the yarn mop does have some more orange versus just the peach notes in it because I did use this as a yarn mop for another project. Something that, depending on how soon I film the conclusions, I might forget. <laughs> but I am not seeing any color bleeding here. So I'm gonna rinse out the soap, put the yarn through my spin dryer, and hang it up to dry. Here is the finished to dry yarn, and I am so thrilled that it feels like a brown yarn. Everything about this feels brown, it feels tan, but then when you take a closer look, we have these delightful pops of color. We've got the pink and the peachy orange in here. It is awesome. Now, not every pastel area has speckles on it, and some of the speckles are on darker areas, and that is totally okay. I'm not looking at anywhere on this yarn and being like, ooh, I wish I had more speckles. Now, it's a busy yarn. There's a lot going on here. And so this is the type of yarn that I always say what you would want to have a simpler stitch pattern because if you are doing something lacy or with cables, the color changes would sort of distract your eye a bit instead of looking at the pattern that you are making. But I, I think it's awesome. I adore the way that this turned out. And that teddy bear brown did exactly what I was wanting it to do. It spread enough so that way we have this tan backdrop, but then also struck fast enough so we have a lot of contrast in here. I'm thrilled. I know I'm tuning my own horn a lot here, but I'm really proud that this came out sort of the way I was hoping that it would work out. I know I sometimes see comments to not be so hard on myself, and believe me, that when I'm doubting myself or something like that, not today, but when that does happen, I'm trying to share those thoughts because I know that feeling self-conscious about your art or your creations is, I mean, it's something that I do feel sometimes, and so therefore it might be something that some of you out there might feel. And so I try to share how I'm feeling or what I'm thinking about the colorways so that way you know you're not alone. After gosh, I've probably got thousands of videos on this channel between live streams and pre-filmed videos and things like that. Or if I don't have thousands, I'm approaching it. But my point is that if after all of this, I can still have doubts sometimes or be unsure how I feel about the outcome, then you should know that if you feel that way, it's natural. But please, if you're enjoying the video and you enjoy my videos, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, and leave a comment below. Engaging with the videos is the biggest way you can help support the content here on the Cabinet Tutorials YouTube channel. Our yarn mop is a wonderful complement to our main colorway here. The pink and the orange sections are much bigger. And so I think that this would fade really nicely uh, with that other skein. It's a fun way to have two things that pair to each other, which are both busy and they have the same colors. Uh, just when you use the same colors on two different colorways, it doesn't always make a beautiful fade set. It can, um, but sometimes I think things work can work really nicely. And I think this is an example of two colorways that work great together. You know, talking about fades has me thinking about a video idea I had where I tried to pull and make a few fade sets from skeins I have in my shop. The problem is that I have so many like one of a kind colorways that 
like it's not something that would be able to be available for multiple people and if someone bought one thing from the set then the set would be gone but I still think it would be fun to just pull things that are dyed from different videos and show how it might work together by just laying the skeins out. Uh, I was doing this actually for a customer a few weeks ago uh, and taking pictures of skeins next to each other and I ended up in organizing at least all the sock yarn by color uh, when previously my three tubs of sock yarn were arranged more by yarn base and by uh, like approximately-ish when the videos came out. It's still organized by yarn base but now all the scroll base like we have here is roughly organized by color which is a really fun way for me to look at it uh, and so if you want me to do some videos like with my shop inventory and things like that yeah let me know because it's this idea I don't know how I would structure it as a video but this idea keeps going around and around in my head but in the meantime make sure you go and check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop there's always a link to it down in the video description I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching